today we are going to discuss ion formation mechanism on air jet spinning. First, ion formation basically means some kind of twisting arrangement has to be there. There has to be a twister. Now, here the twisting is performed by a rotating air vortex and this vortex is created by pressurized jet of air and hence the name of the spinning system is also air jet spinning. The core part of the yarn is false twisted by the vortex and therefore, it loses twist as it moves out of the jet chamber. Since any um, false twist will lead to you know nullifying the twist as soon as the yarn leaves the the twisting element in this case this is basically the air jet unit but basically it is a it is generating false twist and that false twist is generating in the core part of the of the yarn but if it is generating false twist in the core part of the yarn and the the core is losing twist that means the fibers are becoming parallel again in that case the yarn will not have any strength at all therefore that has to be some kind of wrapping twist on the core part of the yarn by some other fibers we have discussed about the principle of yarn formation earlier so we know that there are many edge fibers which are somehow escaping twisting action because they are arriving from the edges of the twist angle which is there in the in front of the front roller nib and these fibers ultimately will discuss more about them in details these fibers are actually get wrapped they do not get twisted immediately they escape twisting actions and they arrive late on the yarn core which is already false twisted as a result of that what happens that these fibers will be finally having some amount of wrapping on the core part of the yarn. We will come to know more about them as we go through the course. So, in this spinning system jet is the twisting element. So, that is the twister. We should know more about how the jet is working, what is the construction of the jet and how does it work. So, here is a constructional view of the jet which is used in the spinning machine. So, what we see here is a constructional view. So, these are the jet nozzles, we are showing it only one single jet, though in the actual machine there will be two jets placed one after the other. Now, here are jet nozzles, the entire thing is jet housing and there is a central core part in the jet which is hollow. So, this jet has a central tubular channel through which 
the drafted fiber ribbon will pass. That means, if this is my the tubular channel, see this is the spinning channel, then fibers will enter from this side into the channel. So, this is this will be the fiber entry. Now, inclined to the central channel axis, but tangential to the circumference are four nozzles. The cross sectional view of this jet housing is shown here, cross sections of the jet and we see there are four nozzles, nozzle 1, 2, 3 and 4. Four nozzles are there and they are entering the housing at an angle, angle with respect to the axis which is the central tubular channel through which the yarn will move. So, they are inclined at a certain angle, but they are tangential to the circumference and through these nozzles what happens? The jet of air is basically injected. So, the compressed jet of air after entering the inlet part that is this the spinning channel part that is shown here, they will suddenly expand because the nozzle diameter is small d and the diameter of the central channel is capital D. And what we see here that capital D is much greater than small d. So, once the air enters the channel, the volume increases and therefore, the air can suddenly expand. But because they are getting into the channel at an angle, therefore, we will see that the velocity of the jet as it enters the channel, it is going to have two components. If V 0 is the velocity at the jet orifice that is at the entry point to the channel, then let us V t becomes let us say the perpendicular to the axis and is a tangential velocity component and V a is the this parallel to the channel axis and this is the axial velocity component. So, V 0 will have two components because the air is entering the main channel at an angle. So, it will have two components, one component perpendicular to the axis, the other component is parallel to the channel axis. So, one is called the axial velocity, the other one which is perpendicular is known as tangential velocity and theta is the jet orifice angle with respect to the channel. So, theta is shown here. The length is capital L, the length of the entire jet. Therefore, the axial component is going to be V a which is V 0 sin theta the axial component of the air which is entering the uh, jet channel that is centrally located channel. So, this axial component will create suction in the jet inlet that means, here at the inlet a suction will be generated there will suddenly drop in pressure because the air is moving forward with a certain velocity. And because the suction is created, this suction is going to draw the fibers from the front roller nip and directs them into the channel. So, from the front roller nip, the fiber will be able to enter into the channel because there is a negative pressure at the inlet of the channel and after entering 
this will move forward because the air inside is moving forward towards the outlet. The tangential component which is V t that will actually create a circular motion and that will generate the vortex. So, vortex is generated by the tangential component of the velocity and because of the vortex is there vortex means the air is rotating at a very high velocity and what it will do? It will catch the fibers and will try to also turn them, turn to rotate them. So, the ducted ribbon of fibers once they enter the housing they will be rotating because they, are, they get caught by the vortex. So, vortex will try to rotate them and this will be the reason why the core fibers will be twisted. So, rotation to the bundle of fibers is given by the tangential component of the air that is injected inside the jet housing and that tangential component is already written it is V t is going to be V 0 cos theta. So, typical values of V a the axial velocity of the air that is passing through the central channel upstream the nozzle it is around 15 to 50 meters per second and downstream the nozzle it is around 180 meters per second these are some typical values. So, upstream side that is near the inlet this is the velocity it will differ depending upon what is the air pressure, what is the inclination angle, what is the diameter of the jet nozzles all of them will have some influence, but some typical values are like this that is upstream the nozzle it is 15 to 50 meter per second and downstream the nozzle it can reach a velocity of 180 meters per second which is quite high velocity. Now, influence of jet parameters. So, we will see that the jets have been designed in such a way that as soon as the air enters there is a vortex that is created which is going to twist the fibers and at the same time the air is also driving the fibers you can say also the yarn towards the exit because there is axial component. The nozzle pressure as long as it remains less than 2 to the power 5 Pascal with increase in nozzle pressure both axial and tangential velocity increase both of them will increase till the air pressure of 2 into the power 5 Pascal that has been shown by some researchers that as long as it remains 2 into 2 to 10 to the power 5 Pascal or less in that range from let us say 1 to 0.5 to 1, 1 to 1.5, 1.5 to 2 the velocity both axial and tangential velocities is going to increase, but when the pressure goes beyond 2 into 10 to the power 5 Pascal downstream the region of the jet orifice axial velocity increases continuously, but upstream side both velocity and pressure decreases. This has been shown through simulations by some researchers that beyond a certain velocity downstream side the axial velocity is going to increase, but upstream side of the nozzle orifice that is at the inlet part basically both velocity and pressure is going to decrease. If the pressure is going to decrease there that basically means the sucking capability is going to reduce and therefore, the fibers from the drafted strand that is from the front roller nib may not be able to 
quickly get in where inside the nozzle chamber because negative pressure is going to be less and less. The other important parameter is the jet angle. Smaller angle gives you higher tangential velocity, but lower axial velocity and negative pressure in the inlet region. So, the mangle is less angle could be 35 degree, 45 degree in that range it could be 50 degree. So, different jet designs are there and the inclination angle of the jet or the jet orifice may vary between 35, 40, 45, 55 like that. So, smaller angle means higher tangential velocity, but lower axial velocity. The other thing is the mean axial velocity in the downstream region of the jet orifice does not change much with reduction in or increase in jet angle. So, mean axial velocity in the downstream region of the jet orifice does not change really significantly. So, we should write here that the change in mean axial velocity in the downstream region of the jet orifice is not really significant when we make the jet angle smaller. So, these are the some of the studies which have been conducted by some researchers and I am only giving you the very the brief of the research results. That this is what has been found and this is going to affect actually the quality of the yarn. So, we should need to know that what happens when pressure is increased or what happens if we change the jet design and go for a jet where inclination angles of the you know the nozzles are different. Now, twisting and wrapping process we want to look into it again. We all know that the high draft and speeds spread out the fibers in the drafted fiber fleece. Here we are showing you the drafting, drafted part of the sliver in this diagram. There is a back roller nib, middle roller nib line, and this is the back roller nib line, this is the middle roller nib line, and this is the front roller nib line. So, as soon as the draft is very high, the fiber will tendency for the fiber to spread out, at the same time, speed is also very high. So, spreading out is more that means the width of the twist triangle is going to be larger. Now, two vortex generating jets they work in tandem jet 1 and jet 2 this is jet 1 and this is jet 2 two jets are working in tandem jet 1 generates counter clockwise vortex to give J is false twisting action. And J 2 generates clockwise vortex to give S z actions. So, the two vortex are actually rotating in two different directions. The vortex here you look at the arrow it is in this direction and for this vortex the arrow is in the other directions. So, the two jets the vortex and pressure in jet 2 is greater than pressure in jet 1. So, this jet jet 2 is more powerful than jet 1. Twist inserted by jet 2 runs back to the drafting roller nib. So, jet 2 being more powerful as it twists the bundle the bundle of fibers the twisted twist will simply will propagate and will reach near the front roller nib. So, J 2 is actually generating false twist also and being more powerful whatever twists are generated by it, it will simply go reach the front roller nib. 
the yarn within the jets form balloons. What we see here in this case is straight line. This is the direction in which the yarn is withdrawn. But actually the yarn within the jet is going to form a balloon. Like you see the balloon profile is shown here through dotted lines. So, within the chamber and outside also in front of the front lunar nip, the small part of the yarn will be seen to create a balloon. So, the yarn is within the jets actually following a spiral path. The rotation basically means if it forms a balloon that basically means it is basically uh, rotating in a spiral path. As edge fibers emerge from the front roller nip, let us say we are showing here one edge fiber, it has it is too far from the you know twist triangle and therefore it could not get caught by the, the apex point where the twist apex point or the let us say the uh, twist triangle. See twist is reaching up to the point here. At this point this fiber was not caught due to some reason because there could be a lot of their place at the edge of the twist triangle because the air around the roller is also rotating violently and some fibers may simply be diverted and may not get caught immediately by the twisted yarn. So, the edge fibers keeps on moving forward the forward end the trailing end of the edge fiber is still under the nip of the front pair of rollers. So, they are positively gripped here, but the forward end is moving forward and a time may come because the it is rotating in the form of a balloon, it will reach the surface of the balloon where the moment the yarn is there, the, the projecting out hairs of the yarn will be able to catch this fiber. So, once this fiber end land on the balloon, there is a possibility that the fiber may get caught by the projecting hairs of the yarn. Not necessarily also that the whenever it lands it will be caught, Maybe after landing also it may not get caught for several times, but they may get caught also. So, whether they will get caught at the very first landing or not there is a lot of uncertainty, but as soon as because they are moving forward and the fiber end is coming closer and closer to the balloon yarn. So, at some point of time the projecting hair of the yarn will be able to catch it. The moment it is caught this orange fiber that we see here as edge fiber will get wrapped around the already twisted part of the yarn, because the already twist exists here. Now, this edge fiber cannot go inside the yarn, because the fibers are twisted already. So, this fiber will remain on the surface and it will be simply wrapped around the main core part, core twisted core part of the yarn. That is what is going to happen to this fiber. So, the ballooning thread causes many edge fibers from being twisted together with the main bulk of fibers forming the core. So, ballooning is going to create some kind of air turbulence and therefore, also it will help in creating more edge fibers and more and more edge fibers will get caught later by this balloon yarn and all those fibers which will be caught by the balloon yarn, they will be actually forming the wrapper fibers that we will see in the yarn. Now, in this diagram we see that the edge fibers are wrapped, here we are showing you that this is jet 2 
and this is jet 1 and in this region the orange color is indicating a fiber which is already wrapped and this fiber wrapping is you see in a different direction than the helix angle that we see in the yarn because j 1 rotates in opposite direction that j 2 the, the vortex created by j 1 is rotating in opposite direction than the vortex created in j 2. Therefore, the wrapping direction of the H fibers because of j 1, j 1 is going to pre wrap the fibers and they will be able to pre wrap the fibers to some extent and therefore, this uh, orange colored fiber that you see it is getting pre wrapped by the vortex generated by jet 1. As I said earlier also that if there is only one jet then also the yarn will be formed, but that yarn is not going to be very very strong because even then some edge fibers will get caught by the balloon yarn and they will be twisted and wrapped to some extent and when the entire code is going to lose twist this fibers edge fibers will be wrapped now in the opposite directions because of the false twist that the main code has received. So, with single jet also you will be able to form some yarn, but that yarn is going to be not so strong. So, to enhance strength jet 1 exists and it is trying to pre wrap the edge fibers around the core of the yarn. So, and once the fibers or the yarn cross the entire jet chamber that is they go move out of the jet to all the fibers in the core they are parallel to each other because the entire core is going to lose twist because core part is first twisted by jet 2. So, they will lose twist and they become parallel fibers, but now because entire core is rotating in the opposite direction and losing twist they will cause the pre wrapped edge fibers to be wrapped much more tightly now, because these edge fibers will now receive more twisting torque and will get wrapped much more tightly around the core part of the yarn. So, the twist variation from here to here is shown in this diagram twist in the core if you see from here to there one is S twist direction this is jet twist direction. So, what we will see if you look at this diagram from here to there where jet 1 this correspond to jet 1 and this region correspond to jet 2. So, up to jet 1 we see the twist is little less in the core because the J 1 is trying to rotate the core also in the opposite directions. So, from here to there twist in the core is quite high all depends upon the power of J 2 and as the twist propagates towards the front roller nip J 1 has got some influence on the twist of the twist that is present in the core. So, because J 1 is rotating in the opposite direction J 1 is not rotating sorry it is the vortex created by jet 1 rotating on the opposite direction. So, there is a little loss of twist and therefore, twist in here there is a drop in twist, but still is still there twist is still there in the same edge directions only bit it is little less. Whereas, in the from here to there the twist of the edge fibers they are shown the twist of the edge fibers are in the opposite direction that is in the z directions because they have been pre wrapped by j 1 and once the yarn goes beyond j 2 further down the pre wrapped twist is going to increase. So, there is a step jump from here to there and increase in twist whereas, twist in the code becomes now 0 
there is no twist. So, there is a drop here, there is no twist in the core because the core was initially false twisted. So, that is what is going to happen that uh, the ultimately the core will be having nil twist or zero twist and we will get quite you know, a some percentage of, of uh, wrapper fibers which are basically because of the uh, generation of edge fibers of the in the twist angle they will be wrapped around the core and that is what is going to give or impart strength to the yarn. So, for effective wrapping what is important the width of the spinning triangle should be large. So, that we can generate more edge fibers that is why twist triangle has to be as large as possible in this case. If we want 15 20 percent fibers to be wrapping the core, fi core part of the yarn then the twist triangle has to be large. So, a high draft actually helps in generating lot of uh, uh, it increases the width of this twist angle therefore, more edge fibers, but at the same time we have to remember that there is a limit to the generation of edge fibers and limit to the proportion of fibers which is going to wrap the core part of the yarn and at the same time giving you adequate strength. We will discuss about the structure part and the property part of the yarn in the coming lectures. So, we will discuss more about that what is the optimum percentage of wrapping fibers in the uh, in the uh, air jet yarn. Now, single versus twin jet we have discussed a bit about them that with single jet also we can form uh, yarn, but as I said earlier that the yarn will be weaker. Whereas, if we go for twin jets, two jets one after the other the yarn is going to be stronger. The other important aspect of single versus twin jet is that as the forward end of the edge fiber emerges they are impacted by the balloon strand before they get caught. So, here is the diagram with single jet and what is special about in this diagram is that this circle indicates the rotation of the balloon shown by this orange arrow and this is suppose this is the circle in which the balloon is rotating and the yarn cross section is shown here. And in this case when there is a single jet the rotational direction of the balloon formed by this first twisted yarn and the rotational direction of the yarn on its own axis both are same. So, if we see it here the rotational direction of the balloon is anti clockwise the rotational direction of the yarn is also anti clockwise. So, both are same Now, when both are same then what happens that when edge fiber lands on the yarn the edge fiber is shown by this blue line when the edge fiber will land on this yarn the direction of the edge fibers and the helix angle of the yarn twist they are perfectly matching or coinciding. When they match and coincide together they get caught very easily because they are matching. In this case capturing of the edge fibers became easier. And as a result, the wrapping length around the core becomes shorter. So, the 
fiber will be wrapped around over a shorter length of the yarn. Even though fiber is long, because the moment in length they get caught, therefore the actual length of the fiber which will be wrapping the core will be shorter. And what is the implication of that? The implication is that the wrapping twist is going to be over a shorter length of the yarn and as a result the yarn is going to be weaker. So, for a given edge fibers that means every edge fiber has a possibility that the leading part of the edge fibers will form wrap around the core part of the yarn and the rest part of the fiber may be forming the core. So, the same fiber we will see that part of it is forming the core and part of it is forming the wrapper and the wrapping part will be less if we use single jet and therefore, the yarn will be weaker. In the case of twin jets when twin two jets are used in that case the rotational direction of the yarn and rotational direction of the balloon what we see here that they are not same. This is the difference that we will get. In this case this is twin jet case they are rotating in the clockwise directions the balloon rotates in the clockwise directions, but the yarn is rotating in the anti clockwise direction. So, as a result the edge fiber will arrive on the yarn at an angle which will not match the helix angle of the false twisted core. So, the implication is that this edge fiber which is landing on the yarn surface they will miss getting caught by the projecting fibers which are there on the surface of the of the yarn. So, the capture of the edge fibers will be finally delayed. So, the length that will be projecting out from the front roller nip the length of the edge fiber which will be projecting out from the front roller nip will be longer when they get caught. So, initially even though it is coming in contact with the balloon it may not get caught. So, there will be a lot of you know uh, uh, even though it is trying to hit the balloon is trying to hit the edge fibers and they are coming into contact, but still they may not get caught immediately. So, the they the catching of the fiber is going to be delayed and as a result of the delay what is the benefit we will get that longer length of edge fibers will be available for getting caught subsequently. And if the long length of the fiber is available for getting caught subsequently the this long length will be able capable to wrap a longer length of the yarn. So, the wrapping length of the yarn is going to be larger because long, long length of the fiber the forward end of the fiber is available for wrapping. That is the benefit we will get and this is happening because the landing direction is such that the inclination angle of the fiber and the inclination angle of the helix angle of the yarn they are mismatching they are not coinciding. So, that is the benefit we will get. Therefore, in twin jets also we will get long wraps whereas, in the case of single jet we will find shorter wraps. So, long wraps will give you more strength to the yarn than shorter wraps that is the benefit we will get. Now, factors affecting wrapping twist. Wrapping twist will be influenced by two things one is spinning speed or delivery speed 
and flow rate of the compressed air. This compressed air is going to decide the vortex speed. An increase in the undelivered speed leads to reduction in wrapping. Whatever the, the speed of the vortex, the rotational speed of the yarn is much less than that. So, there is a slippage between the speed of the vortex and the speed of the yarn. If we compare, there are a lot of slippages there. But if we increase the delivery speed, whatever speed at which the, the vortex is capable to rotate the yarn, that remains fixed as the delivery rate increases, the wrapping twist will decrease and that may have influence on the strength of the yarn. But whenever the pressure of the compressed air is increased, the wrapping twist will level will increase because the vortex speed is going to be more. That is the benefit of going to increase the pressure, but as I said very high pressure may create some other problem also. A larger cross section of the injection bores leads to higher wrapping twist. This is also we should know that a larger cross section of the injection bores can lead to higher wrapping twist. And with this, we close this discussion on twisting part of the air jet yarn. So, the air jet yarns are twisted by the vortex that is generated uh, by the, uh, the two jets that we use. Two jets are used in succession, where is jet 2, which is away from the front roller that is more powerful and the jet which is closer to the front roller are less powerful. Jet 1 which is less powerful is supposed to pre wrap the fibers in advance in opposite directions whereas, the purpose of jet 2 is to force twist the core and so that uh, even though the total twists are removed, the wrapping twist of the edge fibers will be sufficient enough to impart strength to the, uh, to the core part of the yarn. So, that is what is you now happening in this case and because the vortex speeds are very, very high and they cannot be really measuring the vortex speed is difficult, but uh, the speed of the yarn is not you know, close to the speed of the vortex. There is a lot of slippage between the yarn and the vortex. So, yarn rotates on its own axis at a much lesser speed, but even that speed is much, much higher than what we get you know the speed of yarn, rotational speed of yarn in ring spinning or even maybe uh, in rotor spinning also. Speeds being very high, the twisting rate becomes very, very high and therefore, our production rate also increases. So, with this we close today's discussion. Thank you.